Welcome back to the Real Story Channel. In the center of Ianu, a small coastal fishing village in West Africa, resided a young fisherman named Quaim. Quaim was renowned for his bravery and kindness, and his existence revolved around the sea. The villagers relied on the ocean for their livelihood and held it in high esteem. However, Quaim possessed a unique bond with the sea. One evening, as the sun descended below the horizon and darkness enveloped the surroundings, something extraordinary occurred to Quaim. His fishing net, typically filled with fish, unexpectedly caught a wounded mommy water, a captivating creature adorned with glistening scales that shimmered in the diminishing light. Her eyes were as profound as the sea itself. Overwhelmed by astonishment, Quaim mused to himself, wow, what an enchanting creature. The mommy water, struggling to speak softly, uttered, Water, please. I am far from home, injured, and weak. Assuring her, Quaim tenderly responded, Do not fret, I won't harm you. Deeply moved by her vulnerability, Quaim decided to conceal her in a tranquil lagoon, tending to her injuries with medicinal herbs and fresh spring water. As days passed, the mommy water, whom Quaim named Essie, meaning beauty of the sea, gradually recuperated. She regaled Quaim with tales of her underwater realm, sunken cities, coral gardens, and magnificent creatures. In return, Quaim shared stories of his village, his aspirations, and his life as a fisherman. Their friendship blossomed, transcending the boundaries of their disparate worlds. In the serene lagoon, they found solace in each other's presence, and their affection for one another grew clandestinely. However, their secret could not remain concealed for long. A group of village children playing near the lagoon caught sight of Essie's glimmering tail. Their excitement grew, and they began spreading stories like wildfire. Guess what? There's a mommy water in the lagoon, they exclaimed, their imaginations running wild. The news eventually reached Afwa, Quaim's childhood friend who harbored feelings for him. She experienced a mix of jealousy and concern. Quaim, this could bring bad luck to all of us, she cautioned. Torn between her emotions and worry for the village, fear started to grip Yano. The elders discussed ancient superstitions, and fishermen became apprehensive about the sea's anger. Talk of curses filled the air, transforming the once peaceful village into a place of fear and suspicion. One night, driven by fear, a group of villagers led by a four confronted Quaim. They demanded, show us this creature. Carrying torches in the moonlight, Quaim reluctantly led them to the lagoon. When they witnessed Essie glowing under the moonlight, her tail gracefully swaying in the water, they fell silent. However, their fear overwhelmed their amazement. She must be causing our problems, exclaimed one villager. Before Quaim could defend her, they captured Essie and locked her up in a cell, deciding her fate by dawn. Quaim's pleas fell on deaf ears. She's not what you think. She seeks peace and understanding, he pleaded. But the villagers, blinded by fear, remained unmoved. On the night before Essie's execution, an unusual storm battered Ieno. Furious waves pounded the coastline, and the villagers huddled together, fearing the worst. Quaim knew he couldn't allow them to harm Essie, and he devised a daring plan to set her free. With determination burning in his eyes, he made his way to the place where she was imprisoned, the howling winds and pouring rain masking his movements. He reached the cell, finding Essie drenched and shivering. I've come to free you, Quaim whispered urgently, his voice barely audible over the storm. Essie looked at him, her eyes filled with gratitude. Quaim, you mustn't risk your life for me, she implored, her voice quivering. Quaim's heart ached as he reached for the lock on the cell. I can't leave you here to face their anger. I want you to run away. Use the chaos of the storm to escape, he gently touched her hand, attempting to stop him from unlocking the cell. Quaim, listen to me, she said, her voice calmed despite the tempestuous night. I possess the ability to aid the village. 
I can pacify this tempest, Essie declared, furring Quaim's brows in confusion. How can you do that? Quaim asked, perplexed. Essie closed her eyes, a serene expression gracing her face. I am connected to the sea, Quaim. It is a part of me. If you release me, I can harness my powers to calm the sea and protect the village, she explained. Quaim hesitated, torn between his desire to free Essie and his duty to the village. Yet, in that moment, he saw the sincerity in her eyes. Can you really do it, Essie, he inquired. Essie nodded. I believe I can, but I need your help. Release me, and together we can save Yanu, she urged. Taking a deep breath, Quaim unlocked the cell and gently carried Essie in his arms. Even in the pouring rain, her scales continued to glisten. He cradled her carefully as they made their way to the shore, where they confronted the raging sea and the fury of the storm. Essie began to sing a hauntingly beautiful melody that seemed to resonate with the very elements. As a song filled the air, the waves gradually calmed, the wind subsided, and the rain ceased. Witnessing this miraculous transformation, the villagers realized their mistake. We judged out of fear, not understanding, they admitted, feeling deep regret. Essie, with a heart as vast as the ocean, forgave them and bestowed blessings of prosperity and protection upon Yenu. Then, she returned to the sea. Before departing, she gifted Quaim a magical seashell, a symbol of their love. Every day, Quaim would visit the ocean shore, holding the seashell close to his heart. He would listen to the whispers of the sea through the shell, feeling Essie's presence and finding solace in their enduring connection. Their connection evolved into a daily ritual, a means for Quaim to remain linked to the love of his life and the enchanting world from which she originated. One evening, as Quaim sat by the shore, listening to the ocean's whispers through the magical seashell, a soft glow began to radiate from the water. The waves gently parted, and Essie emerged, not as a mermaid, but in human form, walking toward him with the grace of the sea. Is that really you? Quaim gasped in amazement. Yes, my beloved Quaim, she replied, her voice as melodious as ever. The sea spirits have blessed us on full moon nights. I can walk on land with you until dawn. Tears of joy welled up in Quaim's eyes as he embraced her. The villagers, Witnessing this incredible transformation, were filled with wonder and happiness for Quaim. Essie's ability to assume human form on full moon nights became a symbol of hope and magic in Yanu, a testament to the power of their love and the blessings of the sea. On these special nights, Essie and Quaim strolled along the shore, sharing stories and dreams. They sat by the fire with the villagers, who eagerly listened to Essie's tales of the underwater world. Her presence brought a deeper understanding of the sea's mysteries and strengthened the bond between the villagers and the ocean. Quaim and Essie's reunions became celebrated events in Yanu. The village prepared feasts, and the air was filled with music and laughter. These nights beautifully blended both worlds, the human and the mystical. As dawn approached, Essie would return to the sea, her human form dissolving into the waves, leaving behind a trail of shimmering sparkles on the water's surface. Though always saddened by her departure, Quim found solace in knowing that their love had breached the gap between two worlds. Over time, these visits became part of Ienu's natural rhythm. The villagers eagerly anticipated the full moon nights when Essie would grace their shores. Children grew up with stories of the fishermen and the mommy water who could walk among them, a living fairy tale that spoke of love, understanding, and the magic of the sea. Quaim and Essie's love continued to flourish, the eternal bond strengthened by their ability to be together in both realms. Their story, filled with wonder and joy, became a symbol of hope and a reminder that love knows no bounds, transcending the very limits of nature itself. In Abu, the legend of Quaim and Essie lived on, a timeless tale of two hearts. Thank you for watching, see you in the next videos.